Welcome to our Heritage Works. Today, we are making gluten-free chocolate chip pumpkin bread. The ingredients that we'll need today is one and a half cups of your favorite gluten-free flour blend. Now, I am going to use the America Test Kitchen, uh, one cup of it, uh, half a cup of cassava flour, and an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. We also have a teaspoon of baking soda. We also have uh, about half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of pie spice, two large eggs. You can use either a half a cup of granulated sugar and three quarters of brown sugar. What I'm going to use today is half a cup of honey and a quarter cup of molasses. Here I have one can of pumpkin puree, the small ones. This is not pumpkin pie filling, it is pumpkin puree. Um, the recipe actually calls for one and a half cups. This is just a hair over that, so I went ahead and used it all. A half cup of vegetable oil. Surprise ingredient, one quarter cup of orange juice. And the recipe calls for three quarters cup of chocolate chips. I can't have chocolate chips, so I am going to use carob chips instead. I'm going to be using two different bowls here, one for wet ingredients and one for dry ingredients. In the dry ingredients, I'm going to put in the xanthan gum, the baking soda, the salt, the cinnamon, and the pie spice. Now, if you don't have pie spice, and my oven is preheated, if you don't have pie spice, you could substitute um, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, clove, ground cloves, and ground ginger. If you don't have any, you can make some yourself. So I'm gonna just whisk these together, just until they're well combined. Wow, that cinnamon smell, smells really, really good. I'm gonna set that aside. And now for our wet ingredients. The nice thing about this particular recipe is you don't need a blender or a mixer or anything like that to uh, make it. So I'm gonna start with the pumpkin on the bottom. gonna real quickly just break up the eggs as I'm pouring them in. That's just to give them a start of being broken down. The honey. The honey is at room temperature. It's been sitting out so is the molasses and the eggs. Those are all at room temperature. And like I said, you could use um, granulated sugar and brown sugar for this, but I opted to go for the molasses and the honey. I think it'll give it a deeper flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the uh, um, vegetable oil and the orange juice. We will save the uh, chips for the end. Let me clear some of this out of the way. All right, I'm gonna start by whisking this together. The smell of this is incredible. And this uh, bread is good for any time in the fall. Once the pumpkin is starting to 
come out and is available. Um, this would be great clear up through New Year's or even clear up till Valentine's Day. You'd have a nice warm feeling of a bread. Now that this is fairly well combined, as you can see, it's really easy. I'm going to slowly start adding in the dry ingredients. And I'm just giving them a quick stir to get it started. And I'll add the rest of it here in a second. Now, this is a very runny uh, bread to begin with. When we cook this, it's gonna cook at uh, 350 degrees. After about the first 30 minutes, I'm going to tent it and cook it the last 30 minutes uh, with the, it being tented so it doesn't brown too much. Now, you will also wanna leave it in uh, the loaf pan that has already been uh, greased and floured. You'll wanna leave it in that pan um, at least a few hours, um, maybe even overnight would be better. All right, now that I've got this all combined, I'll go ahead and add in the carob. Just going to add them all at once and just do a gentle stir so that they're incorporated throughout. You could definitely leave out the chips uh, if you don't like chips. If you wanted to add in um, some nuts, you could. That's up to you. Uh, some walnuts would probably be good in this. Uh, maybe uh, some chopped pecans might be good with this. It's up to you. All right, that's looking really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my pan. I don't want to play with it too much once it gets in the pan. I don't want to disturb the coating that's on the pan. So I'll just do enough to get it in there and then I'll tap it down so that it's a fairly even across. As you can see, this is a very, very, very easy bread to make. Just a few minutes. It takes more time gathering the ingredients than it does to do anything else. Make sure I get all this goodness in here. There we go. Just do a, I'm just kind of shaking to even it out a little bit. one more time get this on top and then and now it's going to go into the oven like I said it'll be 30 minutes 350 degrees I'll put some foil across the top just to make sure that it doesn't burn and cook it for another 30 minutes you're going to cook it until a toothpick comes out clean Okay, it's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna pull it out and tent it and put it back in for another 30 minutes. So, as you can see, it's a nice dark chocolate color. And I'm not gonna do this really hard because I wanted to have air uh, be able to escape. So I'm just going to do it just enough to hold it on loosely and I'll put it back in.
here's a little tip for you. I'm getting ready to uh, cook something else after I'm done with our bread. But I've already got the oven on and this heat is coming out. I'm going to need this cast iron skillet for the next item. So all I'm doing is letting the heat from the oven come out across it. Every few minutes I'll turn it, but the heat comes across, heats up the pan, so it won't be as cold when I start. And then it won't take as much energy to heat it up to the temperature that I need. It'll already be fairly warm uh, to the touch by the time I'm ready. So if you've got the space, um, go ahead, heat up your cast iron skillet before you go ahead and uh, finish up what you're doing with just the heat of the oven that's going to go wasted anyway. So you may as well use it for heating up your pan while you're waiting. As you can hear, it's time to check our bread. It's been another 30 minutes with it tinted. And boy, does it smell incredible in here. Wow, look at it, that nice crust on it. I am going to use a toothpick. As a reminder, we uh, want to test this, and it is definitely not clean yet, so I'm going to put it back in. But when we uh, finally do get a clean toothpick, we want to make sure that we let it sit for another, um, for several hours on a cooling rack, which I've got set up over here. Um, overnight is better. A couple of reasons for that. You want the uh, inside to be fully cooked. Uh, it should be with the toothpick coming out clean. But the other thing is with those chips in there, you want to make sure that those are uh, nice and done and have had a chance to solidify again so that they don't ooze all over the place. So I'm going to put this back in for another 10 minutes uh, based off of what I see on the toothpick. It's almost time for me to check on this again. Got three seconds left, so I'll go ahead and pull it out and take another look. The smell in here is incredible, which is absolutely incredible. Try the toothpick. It is mostly clean. Um, I'm going to let it sit because I know it's going to continue to cook for the next um, little bit and that will finish off the inside. This is an extremely moist cake or bread to begin with. So I'm comfortable with where it's at and um, I'll show you pictures when we finally take it out of the pan. Again, let it sit several hours until it has fully cooled.